Hey students, welcome to Ocean Atmosphere Climate Lesson 2.3, Currents and Air Temperature. Now we've been learning about um, currents. Uh, we've been learning that these are big uh, uh, like pathways of water that move in the ocean. They're almost like rivers of water that move in the ocean. Uh, last lesson, we learned that um, ocean currents can be warm or cold, depending on where they start. So if they start near the equator, that you most likely are dealing with a warm ocean current, as opposed to if you start, an ocean current starts from uh, closer to the North or South Pole, you're most likely dealing with a cold ocean current. Now that makes sense, doesn't it? Because we said that when you're closer to the equator, you get more energy from the sun, and therefore you expect higher temperatures. So if you have ocean water that's closer to the equator, you would expect that water to be warmer. And if that water is moving, well, it's not just going to leave all that energy behind that it uh, absorbs from the sun. It's going to take that energy with it. Okay, so whichever direction it's moving, it's taking that energy with it. Um, maybe it has a lot of energy because it started near the equator, or maybe it doesn't have a lot of energy because it started near the poles. So today we're going to try to connect now um, the idea of how that uh, warm or cold water might actually affect the air above it. So the first thing we're actually going to do is um, our warm up. Go ahead and click on it. And it's actually, a, might seem kind of weird, but it's a question about garbage. Uh, it's about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Um, now there is a video uh, that I have attached to your lesson, and it's also on my YouTube channel, um, but I don't want you to watch it yet. I want you to try to answer this first, and then we're going to go ahead and watch the video. So uh, here's our image that we have. Uh, so these arrows are representing ocean currents, the direction that the water is moving. And we see here this thing called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Okay. Um, this is North America. Uh, hopefully you notice that. Um, <clears throat> and let's, let's read. It says trash from all around the world, especially plastics, pollutes the ocean. You've probably heard of that. There are areas in the ocean that have much more trash than other areas. For example, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is a huge mass of tiny pieces of garbage circulating in the Pacific. Okay, so basically what we have going on is there's trash in the ocean. Everybody knows that, and there's a lot of plastic in the ocean. However, in this area right here, there seems to be actually quite a bit more um, than other places that we would uh, expect. So let's go ahead and uh, try to answer these questions. The first one is, based on what you've learned about currents, how do you think this mass of trash ends up in the Pacific Garbage Patch? That's the first question. And then the second question, looking at the map, what ideas do you have about why the trash is trapped in this location? Okay, so I just want you to take a couple minutes, uh, again, look at the map, and try to answer those questions uh, on your market set go. And come on back to me. Hey, you have watched, uh, I'm sorry, you've answered those questions. Now what I want you to do is I want you to actually watch the video, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Um, again, it's attached to this lesson in Google Classroom, but you can also find it on my YouTube channel. Sorry, I accidentally hit pause. Go watch that and uh, then come on back to me. Now I'm gonna hit pause. I hope you found the video interesting. I know the first time I learned about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, I thought it was fascinating. Um, I never knew it had existed. And when I first heard about it, in my mind, I thought, oh, it's like this layer of trash that's just covering the ocean and you could like build houses on it and stuff. But what did we find out? We found out, well, actually, no, it's not. It's um, a lot of like, it's spread out. There's a lot more trash there, but it's not like you can, you know, go, go walking on it or, or, or anything like that. Um, interesting too, because every once in a while you hear in the news, um, somebody coming up with new ideas for how to clean up, um, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and the other garbage patches that we find, uh, around the world. So, um, why do we learn about garbage? What's the connection? Well, the connection is ocean currents, isn't it? This trash gets deposited there basically by ocean currents and then it gets stuck there just spinning in a circle. Um, okay. Kind of an aside. But now we're going to go back to our uh, um, main part of our lesson, which is, again, trying to make this connection between uh, ocean temperatures and air temperatures. So we have a, a, actually a demo where um, 
I'm going to put water in two cups. I'm going to put hot water in one cup, cold water in another cup. And then I'm, we're going to measure the air temperature above the hot water and the air temperature above the cold water. Uh, and so what I want you to do is we have a, I have another video, um, but I put it attached the demonstration video to this lesson. It's also on my YouTube channel. Um, so I want you to go ahead and watch that demo right now and then come on back to me and we'll fill out our data table. All right, you just watched the video. Let's go ahead and fill out our data table down here. So the initial air temperature over cup one with the hot water was what, 22 degrees, right? And the initial air temperature over our cold water cup was also 22 degrees. The final temperature was 44 degrees over our hot water cup. And the final temperature over our cold water was 19 degrees. What are we noticing here? Obviously we see a significant increase in the air temperature over our cup of hot water, um, and also a decrease, not as significant, but a decrease in air temperature over our uh, over the air over the cold water cup. So here are my children having a great time in the background. So let's answer this question, explain why the air temperature in each cup changed. What must have happened to the energy in the air of each cup? Let's think back, let's think back to our thermal energy unit. Um, one of the main things that we learned about was what happens when a hotter object comes into contact with a cooler object. We know that there's energy transfer going on, okay? So I want you to think back to that and try to answer in terms of energy transfer. What must have happened to the energy in the air of each cup? Go ahead and take a moment to answer that question and come on back to me. We are keeping on with this uh, idea and this topic of what, how the water temperature affects the air temperature. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the sim and get some more evidence. Uh, the first thing we need to do is open the ocean atmosphere and current sim, follow the instructions to gather evidence about how ocean currents affect air temperature of the locations they pass. After you complete the activity, answer these three questions, uh, or answer the three questions. So the first thing we need to do is select current map mode. Now that's usually the default mode when we go to our simulation, but let's just double check. Ah, current map mode we can see that yes, that is the one selected. Uh, what else do we need to do here? For temperature view, select surface, okay? So temperature view, you can find that right here, and I'm gonna go select surface. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? Kind of nice. I want a picture of that on my wall. Place location sensors at four and five. Remember, our location sensors are located down here, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab one. one at, oh, there's four right there. Boom, and let's see, five, where's five? There's five right next to four and boom. Okay, I have location sensors at four and five. Record the air temperature of these two locations. Where do, I, oh, I recorded down here, I see. So what is the starting air temperature of both of these locations? You're gonna write that down right here. How do I find the starting temperature? Uh, oh, the air temperature, there we go, 17.2 and 17.2. That's what you're gonna write down in your uh, boxes down there. Uh, and then what do I do? Okay, press play, observe the motion of the current, and inside view, observe how energy is being transferred between water and air. We're focusing on the water and the air. What is the side view, Mr. Wigan? Well, this is the side view right here where we place our uh, location uh, sensors. Um, and again, we're paying attention to this right here, energy from water to air. So in both of those locations, after you hit play, Make a note of that. After the temperatures stabilize, after about two minutes, record your data. What data do we need to record? The final air temperatures and whether or not the current was warm or cold, okay? Hopefully we're seeing how we're connecting this back to that demonstration that we just, uh, just watched. And here's our questions down here. After you have done that, at which location does energy transfer from water to air? Remember, energy always transfers from the warmer thing to the cooler thing. So which location does energy transfer from water to air? At which location does energy transfer from air to water? Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. And then number three, why is the temperature shown on sensor four different from sensor five, even though they are at the same latitude? Hey, remember last lesson, we were looking at Buenos Aires and we were looking at Cape Town. They were at the same latitude, but they have different ocean temperatures, didn't they? Okay, so 
that question, why is the temperature shown on sensor four different from sensor five, even though they're the same latitude, which as we know is like the most important factor in the uh, determining the temperature of a location. What's going on there? Hey, take a moment, do the simulation, answer those questions, collect your data, and uh, come on back to me. All right, we are now on tab number four. We are almost done, we're getting there, and we're going to apply what we just saw in the demonstration. We're going to apply what we saw in the simulation to um, Buenos Aires and Cape Town. So discussing the air temperature of Buenos Aires and Cape Town, it says student to student discussion, but we're doing this right now, right here. Okay, so here's our map that we saw before in our last lesson. We saw Buenos Aires here in South America, Cape Town here in Africa, and we have current A, which is coming down from the equator, current B, which is coming up, from closer to the poles or Antarctica. We can say that current A is probably a warm water current and current B is a cold water current based on where they're originating from. So using what you learned in this lesson, complete the following sentences. In Buenos Aires, the ocean or air transfers energy to the ocean or air. Yeah. Same thing for number two, except we're talking about Cape Town. What is transferring energy to what? Is the ocean transferring energy to the air or is the air transferring energy to the ocean? Here's a hint. You just have to really figure out, well, which is warmer? Is the ocean warmer starting off warmer or is the air starting off warmer um, when that water gets there? Uh, the next part, use evidence from the sin and water and air temperature experiment to make a claim that compares the air temperature of Buenos Aires and the air temperature of Cape Town. Talk to your partner about the evidence that supports your claim. So how do, here's our question, how do currents affect the air temperature of Buenos Aires and Cape Town? And the claim, the ocean currents near these cities cause the air temperature of Buenos Aires to be, can I give you a hint? There you go. Different from the air temperature in Cape Town. That's the answer, but I want you to support it with evidence. Give that some thought right now. Think about what evidence supports this claim and then come on back to me. All right, last thing we're doing uh, for the homework. Uh, energy transfer and air temperature. We're gonna be jumping into the sim one more time. Um, so launch the ocean atmosphere and climate sim, select energy test mode, okay? So let's go ahead and make sure we know how to do that. Again, the modes are up here in the upper left, left hand corner. Energy test right here, energy test mode, yes, load and ta-da here we go hey we haven't done this one yet and what do they want us to do here well, let's read this again select the energy test mode so you can experiment with adding energy to the air and the land if you have extra time you can form the same test but select water as a surface oh okay well, i have some extra time I don't see that. number one add energy to the air so the air becomes warmer than the land observe the energy transfer how do i add energy to the air well i'm gonna go ahead and actually hit pause really quick before I do that, so if I add, oh, I can add energy to the air, look at that. And then I'll hit play, and I'll watch the energy transfer, what happens uh, when I hit play. And then the second part, add energy to the land. So the land becomes warmer than the air, observe the energy transfer. So I'll reset the simulation, I'll add energy to the land, so that the land is warmer, and uh, observe that transfer. And then you're answering these two questions. When does energy transfer from the air to the land? And when does energy transfer from the land to the air? You don't have to get too involved in these questions. You don't have to give me a, a super long answer, uh, but just tell me when does that happen? Hey, after that, whew, whew, uh, you are done, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for, thanks, for, thanks for playing. Bye.